Today we're going to be talking about geometric sequences. And a geometric sequence is where you multiply by a constant number to get to the next term. So it's going to be a list of numbers where we multiply by a constant number uh, to get that next term. The common ratio is that number that we use or that we multiply by to get to that next term. So in the past we have seen arithmetic sequences. We're going to see how those are different from geometric. So an example of a geometric sequence would be something like this. So 2, 10, 50, 250, and then it would keep going from there. Because every single time here we're multiplying by 5. To get from one term to the next, we're multiplying by that common ratio of 5. The arithmetic sequences, how that's different, is if we start with 2 and go to 7, then 12, then 17, and it keeps going on from there, here we're adding a common number, and we call that the common difference when we were dealing with arithmetic sequences. So here we're going to be multiplying by a common ratio to get to the next number. So the first thing we're going to deal with is just being able to find the common ratio, and then after we find the common ratio, find the next three terms. So our first one, we have 3, 12, 48, 192. That's our sequence that we have. So to go from 3 to 12, we multiply by 4. To go from 12 to 48, we multiply by 4. And to go from 48 to 192, we multiply by 4. That means that our common ratio, or we'll just say CR for short, is 4. In terms of the next three terms, well, to get from 192 to the next term, we're going to have to multiply by that common ratio, multiply by 4. So the next term would be 768. And then to get to the next term after that, we would multiply by 4 again. So we'd get 3,072. And doing that one more time, multiplying by 4, we would get 12,288. For our next one, we have 2, negative 6, 18, and negative 54. So again, the first thing is to find the common ratio. To go from 2 to negative 6, we multiply by a negative 3. From negative 6 to 18, we multiply by a negative 3. And from 18 to negative 54, we multiply by a negative 3. Now, those three numbers are the same, so we know that our common ratio is negative 3. If those numbers were not the same, then it wouldn't be geometric. To go to our next term, we would have to multiply by a negative 3 to get there. And doing so would give us 162. It asks us to find the next three terms, so the next one after that, we would multiply by negative 3 again, and get negative 486. And one last time, multiplying by negative 3, we would get 1,458. So remember, the pattern isn't going to just end there. You could keep going on. This just asks us for the next three terms. All right, let's practice one more like this. So we have 120, 60, 30, and 15. So here, you notice that the numbers are getting smaller as we go. We're looking for what we're multiplying by. So 120 to get to 60, we would divide by 2, but that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. 60 to 30, again, we're going to multiply by 1 half. And 30 to 15, we're going to multiply by 1 half. So our common ratio here is 1 half. So if the numbers are, if you think that you're dividing by something, you're just multiplying by 1 over that number. All right, to keep this pattern going, we're going to multiply by 1 half again. Now, you can do this one of two ways. The first way is to leave it as fractions, so we would have 15 over 2. And if we multiply by 1 half again, we would get 15 fourths because we multiply those denominators together. And doing it one last time, we would get 15 eighths. So that's one way you can do this. Or another way is to use the decimal version. So if you take 15 times 1 half, you would get 7.5. You multiply it by a half again, and you get 3.75. And one last time multiplying it, you would get 1.875. So either of those are correct. It's just a matter of um, 
you know, how the answer is presented to you as you go. All right, the next thing we have to do is be able to decide whether a sequence is arithmetic or geometric. So now we're comparing the two different types that we've seen. We have to be able to pick out what's happening in the sequence and then which one it is. So if we have negative 7, negative 5, negative 3, and negative 1, well, to get from negative 7 to negative 5, we're adding 2. Negative 5 to negative 3, we're adding 2 and negative three to negative one, we're adding two. Since we're adding the same number every single time, this sequence would be arithmetic. For example, five here, we have 56, 28, 14, and seven. And so as you're looking at this each time from 56 to 28, it's getting smaller. We're, we're dividing it by two, which is again, the same thing as multiplying by half. 28 to 14 is multiplying by half and 14 to 7 is multiplying by a half. So since we're multiplying by a common ratio, this means that this is going to be a geometric sequence. Adding something is ge or arithmetic, and multiplying by something is geometric. Now, let's look at what the formula for a geometric sequence looks like. So the general formula for any arithmetic sequence is going to be a of n equals a times r to the n minus 1 power. So what does all this stuff mean? So this a of n is going to be the nth term. This a here is going to be the first term in the sequence. r is the common ratio, so what we're multiplying by each time. And this n up here is the term number that we're dealing with. So if we're looking um, at the, if it gives us a of 7, that means that our, we're looking at the 7th term. So n would be 7 in that case. Okay, so we're going to keep this up here as we work on this first example dealing with writing the rule. Okay, so here is our sequence. We're going to write a rule for the sequence. Um, we have 4, 12, 36, and 108. So every single one is going to have a of n in it because we don't know exactly what term we're going to be finding. We want to be able to use this to find any number term. a is the first term. So looking at this 4, 12, 36, 120, or 108, the first term is 4 times the common ratio is the thing that you're going to have to do the most amount of work figuring out. So from 4 to 12 we multiply by 3. 12 to 36, again, we multiply by 3. And 36 to 108, we multiply by 3. So that is our common ratio of 3. And then that's going to be to the n minus 1 power. You can also put parentheses around that n minus 1 to remember that it's in the exponent together, but you don't have to if you don't want. So that is the general form um, for this particular sequence. I'll keep that general or the general formula up here as we do our next one. So if we have 625, 125, 25, and 5, again we're asked to write a rule for the sequence. We're going to have a of n equals the first term is 625 times the common ratio, so to go from 625 to 125. We're dividing by 5, which means we're actually multiplying by 1 fifth from 125 to 25. Again, we're multiplying by 1 fifth, and 25 to 5, we're multiplying by 1 fifth. So 1 fifth is our common ratio, and that's going to be to the n minus 1 power. Let's try one more like this. So if we have 0 0.1, 0 0.9, 8.1, and 72.9, that's our sequence. We're going to have a of n equals the first term, which is 0 0.1. That always just gets carried down here. Times your common ratio. So to get from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9, we're going to multiply by 9. From 0.9 to 8.1, we're going to multiply by 9. And from 8.1 to 7.9, 
or 72.9, we're going to multiply by 9. So 9 is our common ratio, and we're going to take that to the n minus 1 power. If you're struggling with figuring out what that common ratio is, you can always take this term and go backwards and divide to figure out what you're doing um, going backwards.